Mary Jane was the only victim to be murdered indoors. In her room in Miller's Court, the Ripper had the time and space to realize his very darkest fantasies. When detectives discover the body, they send around a photographer. We get the first and only photographs of a Ripper crime scene. They're truly chilling. But they're also a powerful investigatory tool that we can deploy today. By using the scene of crime photographs and the really detailed notes taken by detectives who were there, we can recreate the murder scene in detail for the first time in over 130 years. We've built a full-scale replica of Mary Jane's bedroom to help understand the Ripper's psychology. Peter is once again helping us investigate the murder scene. So uh, tell me, what was Miller's Court, a flat or a house? No, it was a ground floor room in a block of over a dozen flats. And we have a photograph of the outside of the building here, taken on the day that Mary Jane Kelly was murdered. OK. Mary Jane Kelly, what do we know about her? Well, she was about 25 years old. And so she's the youngest of the Ripper victims. What were her movements on the day of her murder? Well, we know that at about 2 a.m. she goes out and she's seen with a man, and that's the last sighting we have of Mary Jane Kelly alive. And remember, this is the height of the Jack the Ripper murders. There's a heightened police presence. The newspapers are going crazy about covering the Jack the Ripper case. And there are wanted posters all round Whitechapel saying, beware, Jack the Ripper, and he's still prepared to kill. This is an exact reproduction of Mary Jane Kelly's room, built to scale, and the furniture is placed exactly as it was found by the police when they came through the door after Mary Jane Kelly's death. So what is it exactly that you would look for when you first come into a crime scene? In a modern-day investigation, detectives would be looking for traces of DNA, fingerprints, shoe marks, or even tiny microscopic fibres that could have been transferred from the clothing of the victim to the killer or vice versa. But of course, in 1888, none of this exists. No. So they would have been completely reliant upon the visual signs. What was the crime scene telling them? Was there any sign of forced entry? No sign of forced entry. Um, and in fact, the police had to bring an ax to break down the door. So presumably the Ripper was invited in. And there's absolutely no sense of this at first glance being a murder scene, is there? No, and that's strange. I mean, I, I'd sort of expect that there would be clothes strewn across the floor and the furniture would be upturned, but in fact, the clothes were found perfectly folded and Mary Jane Kelly's boots by the fireplace. She was clearly comfortable in the company of this man. So what does that say about the Ripper himself? Well, it tells us that Jack the Ripper, at least initially, was a very plausible punter. He could put the women at ease. Um, but then, of course, in relation to Mary Jane Kelly, this is the first crime he's committed inside a woman's room. And frankly, he's in no hurry to leave. Dr. Thomas Bond attended the murder scene and made detailed notes, which we are using in our reconstruction. But if we follow his report and say that the heavy blood staining was there, and of course the pool of blood was found underneath, it indicates that her body's been moved somewhat from the point at where I would contend she was murdered to this side of the mattress. And why would that be? Pulling the victim away avoids him being covered in blood and allows him to pose Mary Jane Kelly. He then begins to dismember the corpse and place organs around the room. The question for me is, why does he dismember the body? It's messy, bloody and time-consuming. And we know, therefore, it's incredibly unusual, whether we're talking about murder in 1888 mm -hmm. or whether we're talking about murder today. I mean, there's something on average like 550 murders each year in the United Kingdom and only 
a handful of those murders um, would have any form of dismemberment at all. And the dismemberment cases that I've come across, invariably, that has been done in order to transport or otherwise dispose of the body. But that's not what we're seeing here. And I think what we're seeing in this murder is just simply he's got time to be with a yeah. dead victim and he's exploring, he's allowing his fantasies to be fully flowered. For me, the other significant and striking feature of the murder of Mary Jane is just the ferocity yeah. that the killer has focused on her face. And she was described as a pretty woman, wasn't she? But then when the police surgeon describes finding her here, he said that her face was gashed in all directions and that her nose and cheeks and eyebrows and ears had been partly removed. All of this is shocking, but it is a massive disfigurement, isn't it? Yes, and of course, to attack the face is to attack the very being of the victim. So what can we determine about his psychology from this room? Oh, we see the absolute limits of his misogyny. When he's got time to be alone with a dead woman, he disfigures, he dehumanises, mm -hmm. he obliterates.